let's say that NP is the number of CeeLo P subgroups, and let's say that NQ is the number of CeeLo Q subgroups. Now, what do we know about NP? NP has to divide what? Q. And NP has to be congruent to one mod who? Yeah, P. Yeah. So let's see, this means that NP comes from the following set. One comma Q intersected with one P plus one, two P plus one, so on and so forth, right? Good. Now observe that this does not necessarily tell us how many CeeLo P subgroups there are because this could have a non-trivial intersection, right? Yeah. So this will intersect to one comma k times p plus one, where k is some number, right? So that means that np is either equal to one or np is equal to k times p plus one with k bigger than or equal to one. I guess we can like fuse those two things together into it's equal to k times p plus one where k is bigger than or equal to zero, right? But that's, you know, neither here nor there. Okay, now let's look at CeeLo Q subgroups. So we know NQ has to divide P, and we know that NQ is congruent to one mod Q, right? That tells us that NQ is equal to, or sorry, is an element of one P intersected with one Q plus one, so on and so forth. But like, look, Q is bigger than P, right? And since Q is bigger, bigger than P, Q plus one is bigger than P, right? But that means that this is exactly equal to one. So we've got <clears throat> NQ is equal to one. But now let's let Q be the CeeLo Q, I get the hyphen in the wrong place, subgroup. But then note that for all G and G, uh, G, Q, G inverse is another group of order Q. 